The form factor of the Roku XDS is actually quite small. On the front, you have the infrared receiver and the status light. On the side of the XDS specifically, you have a USB port for your external media. On the back, you have component video, optical audio, HDMI, Ethernet, composite video, analog right, analog left, and your power. Now, if you need to connect through component, you're going to have to buy an optional accessory from Roku. We suggest using the HDMI. HDMI carries not only the video signal, but it also carries the audio signal. So you can literally just connect this to your television and be up and running. If people want to run it through their AV system, through your stereo, you'll either use the optical audio, also known as Toslink, or you can use the analog left and right, depending on the age of your system. In addition, you can also connect directly to your network. Now, if you do not have a connection nearby, of course, you're going to be using the wireless, but it is better to use the Ethernet connection because you get the best connection. So let's try a couple of the connections. To connect directly to your network, you'll use your Ethernet cable and you'll plug into the back. To connect to your television, you'll be using the HDMI cable. Connect to the back. And when you're done, all you have to do is connect in your power. So it is power, Ethernet, and HDMI. Again, if you're going to be using your wireless, you do not need the Ethernet, and it'll just be HDMI and power. Let's see what it looks like on the screen. Once you've registered with Roku and paired your device, click on Settings. There are many different setting types, but the two most important are display type and audio mode. Choose the display type that matches the resolution of your TV and either 16x9 or 4x3, depending on your preferences. You can also choose an audio mode, either stereo or 5.1 surround sound. Coming back from settings, go to the channel store. Channel store is broken out into four different areas. You have what's new, most popular, top rated, and all. In most popular, for example, scroll through the channels, find one you like, click on OK, and add the channel. This adds the channel to the main screen. You can use your back arrow, go back to the main screen. It'll take just a moment while it uploads the channel and the channel will now appear in your main area. If you do not want a channel, click on the asterisk button and you can delete or remove the channel. Click on remove channel, verify you're removing the channel and it will now update and disappear from your channel list. There are many different types of channels. You have Netflix. You have Amazon Video On Demand. Coming soon will be Hulu Plus. There are channels like Revision 3 that show audio and video podcasts. Channels where you can create your own content, like Sanimi. And even a channel where you can access the USB drive port on the Roku device. With Zanimi, you can actually create your own content and post it on the web to share with the public or with your friends. For example, there's an audio channel that I created that has the BYOB podcast. I can share this with friends or the general public. There's also the ability to upload videos and create your own video channel. With the video channel, you upload your videos to Sanimi and you can play them or share them with your friends. Clicking on play, play through, or sharing with friends allows you to post videos and to play them through the Roku player. As you can see, I went outside and filmed a helicopter flying around in circles, creating background noise for the podcast. Clicking on the back arrow allows you to back all the way out through the channels and get to the main area. Revision 3 is also available, which is quite popular for video podcasts. 
you can scroll through the different types of podcasts available, for example, geekbeat.tv, and click on play. At any time, if you've watched the show, it will remember, and you can resume from where you started, or you can go back and start the show over. It takes just a moment to retrieve it, based on the quality and the internet speed. Clicking on back takes you to the main menu. You can click on Netflix. Once you've registered with Netflix and paired the device, you'll have access to all of the movies and shows in your instant queue, and you can click on any show to start it. For example, I was watching Sanctuary earlier, and it will resume right from where I left off after just a few seconds of retrieving and adjusting the quality based on my internet connection speed. Clicking on the back arrow takes you back to the main screen. And there you have it. We've talked about with the Roku with providing access to video content from Netflix, from Amazon Video, eventually Hulu Plus, podcasts such as Revision 3, creating your own channel like Sunimi, and even accessing information from your own USB drive. Check back with usingwindowshomeserver.com for all things for the connected digital home.